Cool, we're live. Uh, we're with the seventh or eighth, I forget, man, of Stay Bulletproof podcast. And uh, um, I want to thank uh, Blend Tech and the Death Squad and uh, all them 10th Planet heads and uh, all those supporters, man. Um, and uh, I'm here. It's a real honor, man. I'm here with a, with a with an LA legend to me, and I've been a fan for a long time. And um, just a, a weird happen of coincidences of, of friends in common. And Estevan Oriel uh, is here with me today, and I'm down at uh, at the the fucking the the den, dude. This is like the Valhalla for all this for you, Mr. Cartoon, a sanctioned show that was down here. I didn't know that this is where you were operating from, but uh, it's it's great to be here, man. And and um, thanks. And we're just kind of getting to know each other, telling telling them about my history a little bit, and 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 love to hear more of yours too, dude. Uh, yeah. Well, but we're right here at SA Studios downtown LA. It's uh, me and Cartoon been here about eleven years. We started with uh, next door. It was a uh, the Joker brand warehouse and offices space. And uh, we're we're there. There was about six of us in the art department, and we got tired of that. And we, at that time, Cartoon had got. Uh, like his first Nike deal and we had gotten a job with Grand Theft Auto with uh, San Andreas so we had you know a couple good little checks coming in and this this spot opened up so me and Cartoon moved next door to Joker and then took over this spot and this is where SA Studios started and me and Cartoon's office you know was and then Joker uh, outgrew the spot next door, so then we took that over because by then we had started doing a little bit more work, yeah. and we left. Uh, we had a spot next door for our boys at Rhyme Magazine. It was a hip hop magazine. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, when the economy crashed and everything went digital and magazines all went under, he ended up, you know, dropping the magazine. And then that space came up, and we we're like, "Fuck, man, we don't want you know people next to us. We want to." keep this place you know our shit because we don't want people you know you know when there's when you're doing something good people want to come around and like you know suck off your energy or whatever yep. so we're like fuck we don't want nobody around you know seeing what we're doing you know want to keep everything under the hat until we're ready to launch you've been it. around for i mean joker's not just born out of just an idea like you guys have been around that yeah. kind of streetwear scene for a bit before yeah. that, right? Yeah, we, we pretty much were at the beginning of streetwear. Like, Cartoon had his own couple lines, and then uh, me and my friend Lucky, which is how I met you, you know, yeah. is we had our own things going on. Um, back then, I was, doing, uh, I was doing construction by day and then doing the doors at nighttime, and I brought my boy Lucky in to work at the doors with me and then i was like you know come do the construction with me too and we met this guy that had three stores and he wanted to open up like a streetwear what they call it now a streetwear store and so they opened that up it was called uh supermax it was on melrose and the the what the line how it started was um i brought in cartoon and he did the first like 10 or 12 designs and then we brought like uh, nikes like the you know the nikes that we wore brought dickies we got a dickies account we had a levi's and we had like you know pro club t-shirts and we just started putting all the type of shit that we liked in the store yep and we had uh cypress hill because at that time i had just gotten a job with um it was kind of weird i was like I had just gotten a job with House of Pain and Cypress Hill, and this guy that we were doing construction on had just hit up Lucky to do the store with him. So I was like, it's perfect. You know, yeah. we'll just promote it the fuck out Cross of it through, it you know, House of Pain yeah. and Cypress Hill. We'll put their merchandise in the store, and that'll be like our hub. And that was like 91? 90, uh, 92 or 93. So this is just when, like, like you guys are – that was bringing bringing the hood to Hollywood, really. Yeah. Like be, between the music and the and the clothing, you guys were the beginning of that. Like, yeah, and then at that time too, we started selling to uh, Japan. 
Japan were just getting into the low riding scene. So our clothes were like the first ones from streetwear clothes to get out there. And How do you hook up with them even? Just from your touring? You're, you're, you're there? Um, or? We had a... I don't remember how we met the guy, but I had been going over there through, you know, tour managing House of Pain and then tour managing Cypress Hill. And Cartoon had been going out there through Muraline Cars. And uh, me and Cartoon were in a car club. And so we are in the car, you know, low-riding culture. And I think a couple of the guys that were in it from Japan came over here and they wanted to start. They they were taking cars there already. Yeah. They were taking Cartoon over there to Mural. Uh, like friends of theirs were taking the groups over there to play in the you know in these in this culture that they had started over there so it was kind of like uh, everything just started bubbling up over there yeah. like our whole culture was just on and cracking over there so it's kind of uh the beginning of a lot of shit you know like that kind of music ju just came out and it was blowing up our clothes came out our culture came out and it was big in you know japan and and as getting big in Europe and it was just a it was like a really live scene and we were there from the beginning and then uh, the guy acted funny you know at the store it was kind of like uh, when I was touring I would only make money from touring so right. I, I was like hey man you know let's let's do the store this sounds great you know we'll we'll get the line in we'll bring cartoon he'll draw everything and then when I when I'm off tour, you know, I could work at the store, and you know, so everything just is like flowing, you know. Yeah. Once the store opened up, the guy pretty much, you know, like uh, was kind of like uh, like a business bully, you know. So right. He, he promised a lot of stuff and didn't come through with it, and so then I. And was you like, guys were just dudes on handshakes and your word, and yeah. you're like, yeah, we're like men, you know. So it's like, and then he's. Yeah, so motherfuckers, he, huh? So he he pulled that shit on us, and uh, we ended up shutting the shop down and quitting. You know everything. We're like, okay, you don't want to come through with your half of the deal. There's gonna be no more artwork coming through. We're not gonna support the shop at all. Yep. And you know that's how Lucky was supporting his family. Yeah, because that was his job. So you know Lucky had to get another job, and uh, we started up not guilty clothing. And then, you know, we had some uh, behind-the-scenes problems. And uh, uh, we had, like, we got a law, uh, we had a, uh, what do you call it, cease and desist letter. Oh, really? yeah, yeah, because some Chinese lady had uh, trademarked the name worldwide. And they are like, hey, you know, you need a cease and desist. And we're like, hey, well, can we come in and talk to you, you know, the lawyer? And we went down here, me and his wife. Me and Lucky's wife went to the law building. Usually, she's when you a go to lady, a huh? yeah, she's cool. Um, usually, when you go into a lawyer's office, if they're balling out of control, they own the floor. Right. You know, they have the whole floor. Right. And, you know, you walk in and it's a crazy office. Well, this office, they own the whole building <sighs> downtown LA by the by the bank buildings over there. So we're like, what the fuck? This is crazy. Um. And we're like, hey, is there any way we can just do a, like a hip-hop version of what you guys are doing? You know, like, can we work together? Like, you guys are doing the stonewashed, corny jeans that go into Target. And, you know, like, back then it was like Fedco and all that kind of shit. Yeah. Super corny jeans, like mustard-colored tie-dye. Yeah. And, you know, like purple and red and green like the ugliest washed clothes pants. Are they still in business or no? Maybe. I don't know. I haven't checked in on them or nothing. The only not, I mean, I've never seen anything except your, like your yeah. stuff. But they were huge, right? Crazy. They were selling a lot of, they were a private label jean company. Yeah. So we told them, hey, you know, we just come back from Woodstock. B Real was wearing it on the stage the whole time, and it was like perfect. Everything was going good. 500,000 people saw it on all the monitors on TV. Woodstock was live. It was 1994, and it was like sick. And the lady was like, nope, I don't want to do shit. And we're like, fuck, man, that's <sighs> fucked up. So now we had to start over. At that time, I just changed everything to scanless and made 
not guilty scandalous i took all the artwork instead of putting not guilty i put scandalous and that was that was that line also a uh, cartoon had a company called joker right with another partner of his and he didn't want to do it anymore they didn't want to do it do the line no more but they had ten thousand dollars worth of inventory and they're like hey man can me and b-real get that you know inventory and you know push that push that brand you know and they're like yeah if you want it's just sitting there and you know the inventory is gonna just go to you know it's yeah. dead so they're happy to get that you know get the inventory off their hands and we just took it and ran with it and it's still going you know 17 years later it's fucking sick it's been like a sick crazy roller coaster ride i mean you look at all the t-shirt co- like when that idea pops and like there's a lot of sick artists a lot of dudes that have great ideas about companies and shit that just can't get off i mean to be around for two decades like that's phenomenal yeah we we're the first ones to put all that like tattoo style yeah artwork on t-shirts i, I think you know period well I, that's what i, I say i mean you're a, i don't remember like when i like it's a doing. trip sit, sitting here I, I don't know like i, I don't people are like who, who you get starstruck around tate like who you, like and uh i was like i was like man i just never really happened once and i was sitting at a ufc one time and i was fucking like well, fuck there's the announcers and there's us like we're like cage side you know and and cindy crawford sitting over to my left and and whoever her, her man was and there's people like that all around and i was like you know it wasn't a big deal really it's just like whatever and i fucking look behind me dude and iced tea is back there with cocoa and i was like holy fuck that's iced yeah. tea you know what i mean but like but i mean that's a legend you know like yeah. that's a fucking for real legend that fucking co-opted the game that came in snuck in like not allowed there fucking a black dude that comes in and fucking you're gonna be a tv star you, like yeah. dude he stole the game from people really yeah. and he flipped it and and he made people look at what like possibility was and that's what like to this whole that's what you are to this whole scene you yeah. and cartoon and lux and like that whole thing it isn't it's built to get stolen from you yeah and that you've been able to keep like that's it's badass dude like i yeah. like it's a goosebump event here you know yeah it's fucking sick thank you yeah and it's like it's cool because it gives a lot of dudes that look at it go fuck man you know and that's the thing is like you can and you go maybe me too you know what i mean and, yeah. and, and dudes look at that and they go maybe me too oh for sure and, all and, of them and every that's one the, of them and that's just... the coolest thing because then you get people trying you know? Yeah, everybody everybody could do exactly what we do. We don't have no special we don't have an extra arm or extra leg or right. You know, we don't have no bionic parts on us. We're just normal dudes just like everybody else, but we just wanted something and just went for it, you know. Yeah. And it was kinda like uh we never wanted to have a normal job, you know. Yeah. I never wanted to work for like a nine to five person. Even when we done construction, it was with our friends. And we having fun. We would, we would. Uh, my boss, he was like a big corn fed, like white boy. He was like yeah. kind of like your size. Yeah. And he would get pissed off and fucking go crazy sometimes. And and sometimes we would box during lunch. <laughs> that was like our lunch break. <laughs> They're like, yeah, you want to put the gloves on at lunch? Yeah, fuck it, you know. Let's Just the, the fucking scene on. of a construction company where you guys have gloves at lo- like. No, that's in the work truck. We got some fucking gloves. We'll yeah. throw on. And we would just go, you know, Sick. like nobody was there. Yeah. The places were empty. The rooms were empty. And will anybody get pissed off ever or is it just done after it's done, whatever? You're no, tired. No, no, We had to work. We yeah. had to work 10, 12 hours a day together, you know, but it was cool to let off some steam. We yeah. were like, you guys want to eat lunch today? Nah, fuck it. You want to put the gloves on? Let's yeah. scrap. So we would do that shit we're during here. lunch and it was fun, you know? Yeah. And, and like, you know, no other construction job, I don't think, does that. No. Nope. You know, so... To me, that wasn't a normal job, but when I talk about construction, that it sounds like a normal job. Everybody's got an idea well, of what that means. Yeah, yeah we've all hung drywall. For us, it was different, you know? Yeah. And we always had these off-the-wall jobs, and our boss was off-the-wall. You know, he never had, like, nothing drawn up, nothing planned. Everything was on the... He freestyled shit, like a, like a Jay-Z I'm type. On building. On building. Dude, that's... Like how do you even get a permit would, on that? We I don't know well, I don't know crazy, what the fuck huh? we would do yeah because he would be like hey uh, sand all those pieces of wood and we're like okay so we just start sanding something and then he goes not that side you're fucking sanding the wrong side we're like well fuck well we don't know what the fuck it is and well he'd be like buddy look okay here 
this is why it's the wrong side. And he'd show us, like, what we were making. And we're like, well, okay, okay, fuck. All right, cool. It'd be like some crazy fucking He's bookshelf. He's some kind of mad and, genius. Yeah, sick. He he really is. Like, like an he, artist. He like, invents shit now. That's crazy that cool. he, you know, shows me these little contraptions and stuff. I'm like, okay. So you still know him today? Yeah. And that was the thing, too, is like, you know, at that time I was working the door at the clubs and I was working for him and I go, hey, man, I got this job offer, you know, but it doesn't pay nothing. And they want me to be a tour manager for a band, you know, called House of Pain. Right. And, and you knew House of Pain how? Because they'd come through the clubs and they were house? I knew Cypress Hill and I knew Everlast. Okay. Because Everlast used to roll with Ice-T's group, Ryan Syndicate, and yeah. Cypress Hill used to come to the clubs too. Okay. And I was a door guy, so I let everybody yep. in or didn't let nobody in. Yeah. So um, that's how I met those dudes. And then when I told my bosses, both my bosses, I was like, hey, man, is it cool if I, you know, you know, jam for the summer? I want to just try this and travel. And, you know, they pay my way, but they don't, it doesn't pay nothing. And they're like, yeah, sure. You know, you, you're a good worker. You know, you always got a job here. Cool. And I never went back, you know, but yeah. I still keep in touch with everybody, you know, because everybody is cool and. And uh, the House of Pain jump around blew up, and you know it was on on and cracking that summer. That's uh, I I had a uh, the last nightclub I worked in it was in New Mexico, and I fucking um, and the way I got started with fighting is like I met, you know, you walk in, I'd walk into like these karate places or a keto or something, and, and I was like, man, just a tough American wrestler beat the shit out of y'all, like fucking you got like, it's like some pretend shit, you know what I mean? They try to. It's it's like religion or whatever. They try to lord some shit over you, make you like scared or believe some. But there's nothing. There's no substance. You know what I mean? And and then I met this dude. He was a he was a, he threw sticks, man. He he uh, he fought with sticks, and he fought with a group called the Dog Brothers. And they'd meet on the Equinox summer or the solstices uh, in uh, Hermosa Beach. And he says, Hey, you want to go do it sometime? And me and my roommate, man, we would fight every day at the house. We'd fight four or five times. We'd go in the backyard and just scrap with a stick, like we're uh, it was wild, and and so we'd fight after the after we got done bouncing. The whole bouncing staff, the ones that had that, that there's four that really had some heart. But we'd go down the dance floor and fucking we'd just fucking throw down with sticks, like fucking just like street hockey gloves and sticks and a mouthpiece, and go. It's fucking so fucking fun. But it's like jobs like that where you're like allowed to like yeah explore whatever you want to do as a dude. You know what I mean? Just do your thing and like, and that's the hard thing too is like there's such like a constraint I think that gets put on dudes that you don't get. It's like, how do you be a man? Like, what is like, who are you looking to? You know what I mean? And 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 then you you know you, then you get people that like I was talking to dudes. I'm I'm on this thing right now, and we're we're doing. I'm part of like the skinhead gang, I'm, and I was like, it's a trip that there's people that are out there that are in 2013 with the internet and everything, are fucking skinheads still, or are like racially hatred motivated, and it's like that is a fucking wild thing, you know? And it's like to me, I think. We all kind of won people, and there's just people that are like, that didn't get the message, or they looked at somebody that they thought were cool, and maybe they're none too bright, and they just were like following that, and it's like it's so, I don't know. The, to, so then to look at dynamic dudes that are out there living their own way and going, you know what, I got it figured out a different way is so fucking powerful, man. And I feel like that we need to in 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 support of that, and in support of in support of people's dreams or what they want, you know. Yeah, it's hard, you know, L.A., the, you're born and bred into that shit, you know. It was real uh, divided here in L.A. It was like, you know, there's the whites, the Mexicans, the blacks, and, and everybody else. And Which way do you think that goes? Do you think that goes from prison culture out or from the streets in? Because it is divided when you're locked up. Both. You know? I mean, yeah, I'd say pretty much both because, you know, there's some things you don't do that you do in prison probably that you wouldn't do in the street but right that is one of the things you know and then there's some things that you don't do on the street that you or that you do in the street that you wouldn't do in prison and you know it, you that people cross the lines you know yeah the lines and, get and blurred a little yeah and that's one of the things probably people think it's you know that it's cool to do you know right but when you once you start uh you know venturing out in the world and you you know you have an open mind and you see more things you see that you know you you gotta you gotta transcend that yeah, shit you gotta work with everybody you know yeah and, and you gotta uh 
Well, that's the thing too. It feels good too. It's yeah. like, you know what I mean. It's like you to not have that huh, in yeah. your chest, man. Fuck, then you, that's freedom. That yeah. that other shit. That's like any of them thoughts that I've ever like, like. That's enslavement. You know what I mean? Like I, I, that's me giving my own freedom away. You know? Yeah. And, and that's 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 like an oppressed mind, and then you don't get to create shit. Yeah. You know. So you uh, you were talking about earlier that you worked uh that that you were working on that car for mask or that you and cartoon were yeah so uh, on that when he uh when he passed um you you knew him personally you guys were fucking around for a little bit yeah we we're about to do a, a clothing company on this uh you know collaboration with tap out and uh and mask was the one that was pushing to do it with us and then, so he he wanted us to build him a car. So we got a 1960 convertible Impala, and we just made it like a tap out car. And um, we we're about a couple weeks away from finishing it, and he got killed. And so we finished the car, gave it to them. Then, when tap out sold to that other corporate company, those guys sold all the toys that were company they absorbed know. everything from tap out yeah they got like everything like boats cars get punk keys. ass and, and and skyscrape whatever money and they absorbed it all yeah and they yeah they 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 got all the toys and then punk ass called us and go hey they got the car so if you guys want it back you know hit up this guy and you, you guys can buy it back so our company bought it back and then we just changed up we took all the tap out stuff out to make it our own car yeah and then um but we kept this one logo on the back we made like a little um you know how they'll say like mercedes benz on the back yep. or porsche or whatever we made a little emblem like that that said uh it's a chrome emblem that said mask rest in peace Sick. and we kept that on the car because you know the car was built for him so we keep how long that. did you how long had you known him before he passed i would say probably like a year yeah but you know it, it was like uh he was an intense dude you know powerful like, energy like, right yeah like he liked you wah, like, you were like best friends yeah you know it wasn't it wasn't like you know he was like standoffish and would wait to no nope. get to know you get to trust you it's just like if he felt that you were a cool dude yeah you guys were like brothers right off the bat yeah and uh he just was a trip you know like he you was know, a he was a crazy dude like the way he would um you know that his whole thing was just believe you know yeah and that was his whole yeah. concept of life if you believe in something you can have it and, and encouraging you to like yeah dude not just not not just how he lived but oh no he would push that on everybody on everybody and he just had um you when you hung out with him if you felt like shit that day or you were bummed out or pissed off all that shit would be gone by yeah. the time he was done with you you were as happy as him you had yeah. as much energy as him and you were ready to go make some shit he was one of the you most know? beautiful spirits i ever met man yeah i remember real. the first time i seen him that they, they had a some big old you know like inland empire fucking pickup truck uh all jacked up at, at one of the grapplers quests out in vegas and they just set up a table. It was like a card table and some T-shirts. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then next next event, dude, they had some uh, they had some like Valley Tudo shorts. And then you know, and you just saw them grow. Like they grew like I grew. Like I, it was weird, man. And and so knowing those guys from back then, and just the same, like you'd have never known that they made any money. You know yeah. what I mean? Just as fucking cool and as gracious. And like when like you're saying, when you're in a room with them, yeah. he's fucking right here with you. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like. He and he makes everybody feel that way. It's yeah. like he was one of those magical characters. And one of my favorite things he ever said, he goes, he goes, you know, I might not touch a million people, but he says I might touch that one guy that can touch a million people. And you know, he was all about revolution like that. Yeah. You know, he was a, and that he, you know, God bless him, man. That was a yeah, fucking was beautiful, a beautiful man. You know, yeah. and and his and he's he's one of those guys that echoes. I mean, that I don't know anybody that talks anything except this way about him you know what i mean yeah like, yeah no there's no the, anybody that ever met him or anything could never say nothing nobody that knew him could yeah. say anything bad about him because he was just that guy you know he, was, he just outshined with good man yeah everybody every time i was around i, I tell cartoon like 
Yeah, I trip out on Homeboy. Like, every time he's around, he's just, like, cool as fuck. Like, and he makes it, like, fun, you know? Yeah. Makes it if you're going to cool draw a picture, and... you couldn't draw it without a big grin. You know, yeah. like, he's got, because he's, he's just sprung on his dope, man. Yeah, and just the whole, the way he would, you know, dress up and do all that shit. Yeah. And, you know, he was just, like, a big kid just having fun. Rog- and... Rogan said once, he's, like, he's looking at him, and there's, like, there, there was four of them that were going around at that, or five, actually, that were going around. There was Scrape and and, uh, and Mask and, and Punk Ass, and then there was Joker, and then there was um, this other dude, Jade, that was Rocker, that went that went with them everywhere, you know, and they were this little crew, you know. And, um, and, and Rogan was like, it's a fucking trip, man. These guys are like rock stars without producing any music. Like, they go, they play yeah. dress up wherever they go, and it was, man, they, they put a mark down, though. They put a stamp on it, oh, you know? Yeah, they put a stamp the world you know with yeah. their with their brand and i trip out like i went to their they were rebuilding the whole offices and everything and i went into um uh, mask's office right and he was designing it like uh it had kind of like a vibe like um uh, like marlon brando in um in superman in the old superman movie yep. when you walk in you see the way Marlon Brando had his pad, and you're like, whoa, this is crazy. And that's how Master's Room was. It was all white and crystals, and it was wild, man. I was like, how is this going to be an office? Like, <laughs> this is crazy. And it was like a, Just picture like, him with a scepter and a throne. Yeah, and it was like a set of a movie, you know? Yeah. But I was like, you know, that's, that's, that's his, his vision. Deal. That's you know? his tease. Yeah, so he – and I would have loved to seen him – work that room you know because that room was crazy and his whole vibe with that room yeah it would have been sick you know but you think uh, of the mark that he left you know and i think about like that him as a leader in that way you know it, it's a real tragedy in that you know you look at like what he did but like fuck what could have been because i think as time goes on it's like it moves faster at a faster rate even and that evolution becomes exponential and and you think with a guy's speed like that, that's grinding something from nothing, yeah. and then it and then he's got millions of dollars. Like where does that go? You yeah. know, I mean that's a power. It's it's powerful, man. Like and I, I look at you too, man. I was I was following you on Instagram, you know, and uh, and dude, that like w- when the cops shot all those people uh, recently, uh, you know, like like the cops shot that dude, and then everybody comes out and they're just like basically just going. Well, what the fuck? That's bullshit. And there's a couple hundred people on front lawns, and then they let a dog go on a little kid and on on a on a mother and shit. Like, and the cops like, well, he slipped a leash or whatever. But when when all that happened, and then they brought tanks in and stuff and started shooting people with rubber bullets and fucking, you know, there's a couple dumpsters on fire, and it's like it's like when you talk about like revolution and like where the world goes right now, and uh, and you're there to photograph it. You know what I mean? It, um. Were you, did you just happen to be out there? Were you just rolling around at that time and, and uh, to to see all that, or you saw the news and you're like, I'm gonna go out and check it out, or what? What was it? The when Dorner was around? No, no, no. Way before then. Uh, God, that Dorner's another mess, ain't it? Yeah. Um, no. What was the city fucking inland a little bit where they they shot a dude in the back? They said they that he struggled and he he got dropped. He didn't get killed though, but a bunch of people saw it and then they went out. And then the tanks rolled in, and the national, like I think it was the National Guard that came out, or there was a yeah. big suppression unit from the police anyway. It wasn't in Carson. It, um, God, it was about a year ago. But it was one of the only times that the cops moved in a military way on on a whole community of people that were just asking the question, "Why is this dude shot?" At, you know, he's, I think he was handcuffed, maybe even, and yeah. uh, and and the th- bum, you mean? The guy that got beat up and the and they killed him. No, and the dad. Uh, he was screaming for his dad. No, I. Uh, where was that city? It was national news everywhere. I don't remember. I'm around so much of crazy shit. It's crazy, and you you did you and you photographed some for that Dorner case or what? Yeah, the well, when there was one time uh, that I was driving home, and um, I'd seen on a on the freeway I was going down Alameda and it crosses over the 110 freeway and I'd seen like a, a high speed chase coming cause the road bends around and then I seen them all stop right there on the freeway like right 
before in between Alameda and the 110 on the 101 and I drove around the side road there that goes alongside the freeway and then I got on the bridge facing them so I could see first I saw them shoot the guy you know the cops shot him when he was uh you know they they he, the car stopped right there this was the pickup truck no it was like a little white car okay and the guy got out of the car and they shot him and then I went around to the other bridge and I shot seeing the whole thing with uh you know his car then the cop cars were behind him and then all the traffic was behind that so I shot, the, I was there at that time, and then the other night, um, we were all sitting here late, you know, like it is tonight, and, and I start hearing, like, helicopters, and I see five helicopters out the window over downtown, I was like, man, there must be some good shit going on over there, and then it started, they started coming towards us, and I was like, what the fuck? So I thought, you know, oh, man, here comes another high-speed high chase. I was thinking maybe they are catching a chase off the 110 freeway, and the guy got off, and he was coming down our street. So I went outside, and I seen all the helicopters coming towards us, and then I seen them stop over on the 7th Street Bridge in the L.A. River. So I was like, hey, we should go check it out, see what, you know, see what happened. It's only a block away. So we went over there, and um, we're driving over the bridge, and I see, like, there's these light posts along the bridge, and I seen cops like snipers. Jesus! At each, at each post, you know, for about five of them. And at that time, they hadn't had the road blocked off yet, so we went down and came back around. And by then, they had the road blocked off, but I was able to get off one shot of one yeah. of the snipers. So then we we asked the, the cop at the bottom of the hill. He's like, "Hey, what's up?" And they go, "Oh, they think Dorner's over here." You know, Holy so fuck. go in your go in, you know go inside. Don't be out here in the right. streets because they think he's on the railroad track. Because we're shooting everybody. Yeah, <laughs> don't so be on the streets. It don't matter yeah. if you're white, black, or Chinese, yeah. or a, or a girl. You might catch a bullet. Yeah, because they had shot up those two ladies with the truck. They shot up two ladies, and then they shot up two different dudes. And they, one one dude's a white dude, the fucking yeah. a, a late. And it's like, and they're like, yeah. and and I thought when I started hearing that shit, I first saw the one. I was like. Fucking some ladies. I think like one lady was pregnant or some shit, and I was just like, yeah. and, and then they shot that dude. There was a surfer dude that was going to surf. They pulled him over, so they had eyes on him, let him go, and then they fucking rammed his car two minutes later, like a like a battering ram, yeah. and fucking then dumped six rounds or something like that through his windshield. They, they couldn't see where he was because his airbag went off. They didn't hit him, thank God. But it's like you already had an ID, a positive... And it's a white dude that's yeah. 100 pounds lighter than Dorner was. Like, what? And then I just thought, and it was right after the fucking drone shit started. They started talking about that, right? And they go, yeah, there's uh, that you know, we can we can fucking shoot citizens without any trial now. And we can fucking hit, hit them with a the drone or whatever because they killed a couple dudes, I think, in Pakistan maybe. And um, so there's two American citizens, no trial or anything. There's an assassination list that got leaked to the press that Obama had. And then, I was, then this started happening. I was like, they greenlit fucking American citizens on soil now, too. Like, this cop, they're just trying to kill him. Like, they're not asking any questions. They don't even have positive IDs. Yeah. And they're just putting bullets in him. Like, what the fuck? They didn't want to, uh, he was going to expose them. You know? And so to what? Like, like to how, how scandalous they are. You know, th that other cop came out. He came out one day, and there was a story about him, like, one day in the news, and that was over. You know who, you know I heard who. that he was gonna that he knew stuff spilling back to the OJ trial and to all those like that all the main cops that were in the OJ trial were now captains and shit were now high ranking dudes or something like that and he had something on some guys but I only heard speculation I don't really know yeah. you know too much yeah and, who, you'll never know and I guess they'll never know now yeah because you know if you're not in there then it's just. You That's some is, fucking too, nutty shit, man. Rumors go on, and it just yeah, yeah, yeah. Every, everybody's different story comes out, and it's just you know. Bigger I think and that's bigger. just what they want to. It's like, who cares even if there's a real story in there? As long as we got three other plausible ones in there, it'll all just look like crazy talk to people, and yeah. we'll get voted in again. Who gives a fuck, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's gonna be the next LA riots is gonna be a, a real wild one, you know, because there's. Uh, you know, a lot of tension. You were here for the first ones, yeah? Yeah. And I, Where were you at when that happened? Uh, I was in my apartment in L.A. We were right there in Hollywood off of, uh, like, Vine and Melrose area. 
And um, it was on and cracking over there. Yeah. Yeah, it was wild. I didn't realize that it went that far north. Like I didn't, I didn't, I didn't have any idea that it was like that. Oh yeah, it hit but, all. But of then LA. I heard like Danny Boy was talking about it once, uh, and I was like, "Holy fuck!" He was like, "Dude, it was fucking nuttier and shit all the way yeah. up here." The National Guard tanks in the street, yeah. and curfews, and you know they said anybody in the streets was gonna get dumped on. And but you know prior to that, it was like there was no cops in the street, no parking police not nothing where none of the authority that people hated were in the streets they were all right hiding the only ones that were cool and people were letting get by were the fire firemen right and ambulances dudes clearly there to yeah. help people but the the cops and the parking people were hiding out the parking people yeah they <laughs> Those guys are like, Anybody oh, will. They're yeah. like, I can bust a grave on a parking. Does yeah. it awesome for free? Yeah. Good deal. Yeah. Everybody's gotten tickets. Yeah. And they, you know, those guys, I don't know how they do it, man. I would hate to have a job where it'd be so tough. Hated by everybody. There's all nobody. Day long. On, nobody's on your side. Yeah, nobody likes you. Uh-uh. Nobody likes you or your job. You got to kind of be, I think, of, of a mind where you're like, either you're oblivious and you're just a happy, nice person person or something or else do you kind of like fuck the wor- you like you know you got yeah. that you got to have yeah, hate like in your those, heart kind of to Columbine do that it's like kids. you're going to ruin somebody's day every day you're ruining multiple people's day yeah. it's like that's a shitty job man i don't want that job you know yeah. and they go out of their way too you know like they go they go into parking lots they hunt it your stickers are right or your thing and, and there's going to be the flip side where people will be like well, if you just registered your car, you wouldn't right, have a problem. Right, if right. you just did this or you just did that, well, fuck, you know. Sometimes I remember you get caught up in a meeting or, you know, you're five minutes over or, you know, sometimes those dudes are just Dude, waiting. I remember when yeah. I was, I, I remember one of the first times I really was like, oh, what a celebration. It, it dawned on me, I go, I got fucking, I got proper registration and I got proper insurance on my car. Like, for a long time, like. That would be outrate. Like it was just extra expense. You're poor. You're a fucking kid. You don't have. You know. That's yeah. all I could do to scrape together fucking money for a car. Let alone this. You know. Yeah. And every ticket, you know. And every ticket is like a. Oh. Every fucking. Uh, traffic school and all that shit. Yeah. Just, they they make so much money off that. I think you know that's the crazy part about it, is that they're so money hungry that they just go yeah. out to get their money. Well, and it's all like you know like last year I don't know like mammoth. I think Sacramento and there's another there's a third city they all filed bankruptcy yeah and 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 that means that the fire anybody that had a pension as a cop as a fire person as anything sorry city worker you're fucked you yeah. get zero pension so all those people that are re- relying on that after they put in their time yeah. and I, and and I thought you know like I got an accountant I got a bookkeeper you know I got a fucking a, a CrossFit and Jiu-Jitsu gym and then I I you know and then myself is like my own brand it's like I got people that pay attention to that shit. Yeah. How bad is the fucking bookkeeper for those cities? What kind of fucking accountant do you have that bankrupts a city? Like, yeah. and that's just people stealing money. I got to think, you know, everybody just robbing that place, yeah. you know, especially when California is like the fifth biggest economy in the world. It's huge. I, there's more rich California. people here than anywhere. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So those three cities are in California. So how does that happen? Yeah. You know? And going going back, you said the next riot here. You think that you, do you feel that you know same same thing again? Do you feel like do you feel that kind of a vibe? Do you feel that's inevitable? Oh yeah, yeah, I feel it from uh, uh, from the Mar- uh, the May first walk the, uh, and the whole uh, what do they call that shit? Occupy LA. Yeah, yeah. Watching that and um, you know the the drones and the way they they operate you know at the games like when the lakers win or, yep. the, or the kings win or just the the police mentality here is is they kick it off you know a lot of times an event will be going great until they show up and then by the way they show up yeah. people are ready to go you know go at it yeah you know, i was just at a thing they do this thing uh every year in, in santa fe called zizobra and it's like they it's like a, it's like i don't know it's it's a trip man it's a trip like it looks like witchcraft cult type fucking shit it's like they mix in like 
Roman yeah, like a big burning man. Big burning walk. man. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, exactly. You've seen it. It's like they call it old man gloom or, or whatever. And yeah. it's like burning all the bad of yesteryear and going into the year fresh type thing. But it's like a lot of Indian culture, a lot of Hispanic culture, and a lot of Catholicism, all like with the dancers and with the road. Like it's a trip. But I was I was just looking at that shit and because uh, there's fucking you know all these people descend on this park and it's packed. And then there's a there's a line, you know, there's like a rope that separates like performers and and things like that. And then there's just cops looking. Oh, and I'm like, yeah, when they come with the helmets, you it's know, a whole nother, uh, vibe. you could be walking through and just saying hey to people. You know what yeah. I mean? But you got this outfit on and a shiny piece of metal. And all of a sudden it's like a us and them thing. And it's yeah. like, it don't have to be that. You know, you here to help me or you waiting to crack me? You know, yeah. it's, it, and, and it's like you set that tone, man. And uh, it's just fucking no good. I mean, I remember working as a bouncer and like being that. And it's like, there is that. It can be that mentality of us and them. But it's like, and, and I already knew what people were thinking of me. So it made it made me more prone to like, man, I need to smile and I need to be gracious. And if something's going to happen, it's like, hey, this is just how it's going to be. We're not going to crack heads. I'll put you to sleep. You're going to go to jail. Probably. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I, I'm not I'm not here to beat nobody up. I'm not. You know what yeah. I mean? It's like it's just this way or that way. And as long as you know the, the deal, that's cool. But like to fucking be in that place where it's like, I just can't wait to fucking go full tilt. Like, yeah, yeah. Fuck. Yeah, I used to work with guys like that all the time. I would tell them, hey, just calm down, you know. They're, everybody's pretty cool most yeah. of the time. Yeah, why make a problem where there's not one? Most of the time, the people are cool. Every once in a while, you have drunk idiots, you know, who just don't know when to shut up or when to stop. Yep. And, uh, you know, you just deal with them, like, on a one, you know, one-on-one yeah. basis. But, but you don't deal on everybody time, based on him. Yeah, most of the time, if you're cool and happy and respectful to everybody, that's yep. why the guys, you know, from Cyprus, I think, thought i'd be good for the job because they seen you know that i was cool with everybody and i like i had that cool energy and yeah. i was nice with everybody and respectful to everybody but at the same time you're not gonna come to my job and shit on me or right or punk me you know yep. either especially when i'm cool to you know right so that's what they wanted you know me to to do out there you know i was cool with everybody nice to everybody that we came across because when you're on tour, everybody that you see that year, yeah. you're going to see them the next year. Yeah. If you do good. Yeah. So why fuck it up? Why are you going to throw When did you stop leaving the them? When, when did you stop touring with them? Uh, 2005. I, they, didn't, they weren't touring that much, and I, and I only got paid when we were on tour. So I had to make a decision. I was like, you know, do I wait and tour four or five times a year in right. all these weekend shows, or do I just go you know head first into doing photography and videos and directing and stuff and at that time i was like you know hey i can't go on this what started your photography was just being there and going i want to photo document this or i'm seeing some cool shit and, and like at a certain point you recognize dude i'm in a very unique spot to you know or, or what my dad actually uh, recognized it i my met dad your dad and, wife. and they uh <sighs> they saw it and they were like you should be taking pictures of all this. And they gave me an extra camera they had, and my dad gave me like a five-minute crash course, and that was it. From then on, I just... And that was a course film back then, yeah? Yeah. It was a, it was like a Minolta something. And um, Did you have a time when you were like, when digital came out, and you're like, fuck that, I'm old school, I'm only shooting film, or were you yeah. like... Were I you, still you feel do? like that. Yeah? But I have to shoot digital because people are ho so cheap now. And they, they, they use the same, like, excuse, like, oh, the budget was cut, this and that. And, right. you know, we, we, uh, you know, we have to do this for this much money. And, you know, they're all, they're all crying broke. Yeah. You know, but you know they're not. They're full of shit. Dude, no matter what. I was just telling somebody earlier, I was like, no matter what movie I, I ever been on, I go, they all they ever say, dude, it's just not in the budget. It doesn't matter if it's a $300 million film or a yeah. $10 million film. It's like. It's just not. It, it's all the same story. Like, there's a guy that that's his job to just say no. You know, it's like, all right, you're killing fucking art. You're killing what yeah. it could be. You know. But then you look at some of the movies and you're like, what fucking asshole bought that pitch? Yeah. You know, like, I yeah. would have loved to hear that pitch. That's so why I really this, appreciate like a this well, guy. That's was, a hustler, dude. Yeah. You know where this, where he got to where this guy was like. You know what? That's a great idea. We need to spend twenty five million on that on yeah. that movie. And you're like, who 
who the fuck green lighted this you're shit? like on steven seagal like again? how did they ever you know even go to production with yeah. this shit let alone put the fucking thing out it's crazy dude or like i always trip out when i go how did that actor agree to this you know this is representing you yeah. you know what i mean it's like when i seen uh it was like john travolta did the punisher and i was like you fucking serious because he'd been in some good shit and he, like how did he get connived into this you know what i mean or like yeah. uh, like uh check that john malkovich and 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 josh brolin once I, I i it was uh like jonah hex yeah and i look at that and i go dude it's hard to sit through this and these guys are academy award-winning artists yeah and they're you know what i mean it's like wow man that, it's crazy what, what where do you think that the line gets blurred with with art and money and and how do you how do you stay above the fray of that i mean you you make i mean the way you do is like you build where we're sitting here, but like, uh, like you have to would take you the... be doing what you're doing if you couldn't be the creative uh, director of this? You know what I mean? Or if you just had to work for somebody and they're like, nah, shoot, shoot this. No, sometimes you have to take the shit jobs that you don't want to do because you're responsible for people. You know, you're responsible for people's families income you yep. know i could be a dick and just be like fuck that shit i ain't doing that fucking cornball right bullshit but then i think well we have 20 employees so you know all them people's that's are, weight on they're counting on, you know their yep. families are counting on us to bring in work to keep these dudes working yeah because if we say keep saying fuck you to all these jobs and you know well who's gonna what are we gonna do wait yeah. for the one job a year that's cool right you know, or we can do, you know, some shit that's not so cool. Keep the doors What's open. What's your favorite job you ever worked on? There's a lot, you know. Some of them aren't even jobs, you know. Some of them are just What's doing the What's your favorite, art. like, projects that, I guess, that you've been involved in that you're like, I can look back on that and, like, like and I show my kids or whatever. I'm proud yeah. of that, you know. I would say, uh, you know, all my, uh, I'd say my book, the L.A. Woman book, yeah. um, you know, proud of that. It did pretty good for my a first time photography book. Um, it w you know, I, I got fought on it a lot about putting it out because they wanted me to put out the street stuff, you know, with the homies yep. and the cars and this and that. And I, I just got, you know, fought by a few different people, the publishing and in my company, they're like, you know, why do you want to do that? I was like, you know, I just want to show people that I'm not like a one trick pony, you know? Right. I can shoot other shit, you know, I can shoot girls, this and that, and they're like, okay, fine, we'll we'll try it, and at first it didn't sell so good, and then it sold out, and they're like, hey, you know, what do you want to do next? And I yeah. go, well, we'll do what you want to do this time, yeah. you know, you took a chance on me, and did what I wanted to do, I'll do what you, you want to do. You always wonder, too, like, um, if they'll blow that up, you know what I mean? It's like, they, they like... Eh, if they're not so interested, are they going to put their correct marketing and PR behind it yeah. to make it pop or not? Because I don't know, like what I'm finding in in Los Angeles in a lot of this like high end business kind of stuff is that it's not the best guy. Yeah, it's the guy that's there and that fucking can yap in the right way. And it's yeah, like, it's and if you awesome. can't somehow put yourself in the right spot, you're not you're not going to get looked at that way, and people yeah. aren't, aren't going to put anything behind you. And so somebody that's not as good as you we'll get that spot yeah. you know what i mean it's a hard fucking there's yeah. some heartache to take to get to the spot where where oh, yeah. where you can it's call a still, shot like that uh, yeah it's heartache every day you know because every day i'm unemployed you know mm -hmm. i have to fucking think of how i can go get me another job and and i'm my i'm my manager i'm my salesman i'm my uh, creative department your I'm my pr RD. guy you're yeah, your, I'm all everything. that shit because yep. it's just you know i'm i'm going for me yep and it's untraditional because there's a lot of other photographers that'll have an agent, they'll have this, they'll have that. And I don't have none of that. Have you shit. ever tried? I in the beginning I tried. I had these two ladies that were, you know, two different ones. I tried for um, about six months each, and and um, you know didn't didn't. Everybody's thing is that they don't know how to market me like i don't know how you know you're not really a fashion photographer right you don't really you don't just do music you don't just do that i go well, how fucking great is that i don't just do yeah one thing i yeah. can do it all you know like no matter what you put in front of me i'm gonna put it in focus <coughs> and i'm gonna frame it right and it's gonna look cool whether it's a fucking tree 
a homeboy, a, a rock star, yeah, or a, or a product. Did you have guys that you would look to that you're like, I like the way that guy does that, or I want to learn how he does this? Like other other uh, photographers that you would look at and like. Yeah, I would look at people that were good that I thought were the shit. And like I'd who? Be like, there's a lot I looked at. Like, uh, like I remember my mom had like an Annie Leibovitz book, and she did like a lot yeah. of rock stars and shit yeah. like that. And I was like, well, that's a trip. That's somebody that just makes money taking pictures of people. I was like, you know, that was the first time as a little kid I started yeah. looking at stuff, and I was like, there's other ways to live out there. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, there's people like that, you know, and... Um, I forget a lot of their names, you know, but there's like uh, Richard Avedon, Ellen Von Unworth, Mary Ellen Mark, uh, Rocky, uh, Dido, you know, there's all these people that are just like good picture takers. Yep. And then there's people that aren't so good, but their hustle is so good that you're like, right, that's a motherfucker right there, right. you know? He's like, He's not the best, yep. but he knows how to hustle. And that, you know, I know guys that are the best. They're so great. Right. And they ain't doing shit. Yep. You know, they're, they're working at the post it. office like, to be able to make some money yeah, or something. Like, they went to school. <sighs> they know all the techniques. They know how to light everything. They know how to. You ever take classes or anything like that? Go to school? Any no, of that? None. Because yeah, I always thought that, fuck, if I go to do that, then I'm going to be out of the mix and yep. out of sight, out of mind, and no work coming in. and I need to keep the bills. Did you did know. your pops help you a bunch, like with with uh, like tips and stuff like that? Because no, he, he's a fantastic artist, also. Yeah, he gave me like a five minute crash course. It was like um, in the camera he gave me, there was these two black needles, and when they met up by you adjusting the knobs, the dials and stuff, when they met up, that was time to shoot. <laughs> so he was like. Hey, man, you just line up those two black needles inside there, you know, by either turning this and this, and you just get them to where they both, you know, yeah. sink in and the lines meet, and go for it. And I was like, man, that sounds easy enough, you know, so that's what I did, and, you know, here we are, you know, but I just, uh, for me, it was more the hustle, you know. I yep. saw my, my parents both struggle, you know, when, when I was growing up and I was like, fuck, I don't want to, I don't want to do that, you know? Right. So I just worked extra hard. You know, I've been working since I was 12 years old and um, I always had like a summer job. Yeah. Whether it was like working at a, a ha ha hamburger stand or on a fishing boat or something, I was always like, I had a job, you know? Yeah. And, uh, and, uh, that's what I was always taught, you know. You, work. You want to make money, or you want to do something, you work yeah. for it. I'd either sell dope. Yeah. Or I was working in a, like the first real job I had, besides cutting lawns and shit. I was working in a boatyard, like filling boats with gas and and yeah. washing them and shit, and cutting their lawn. And then you know, same you know, keep doing whatever I could hustle, and then work cutting trees and and chipping trees at on a, yeah. on a on a tree crew, you know, like or a gas station or delivering pizzas or like. All that shit, and then all that side hustle, and it's just like always. I'm like, it's you're gonna have to do something, get up and running. Yeah. You know, it's like that old thing about the lion. He's gonna get up running, hunting food, and 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 he's gonna hunt the gazelle, and the gazelle's got to get up running because he got outrun the lion. And regardless of who you are, whether you're a lion or a gazelle, you better fucking start running. Yeah, you know? exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's that's how it is. And you know, a lot of people these days they're just lazy. You know. Yeah. Well, and, and, that, and then and them are sad faces, like, too. You know, They're all like, you know. oh, you, this, this, that, and the other. It's like, well, you go do something. Like, I always have people make on Instagram, but you, you know, you brought up, they'll make a comment, like, on there. You know, I'm like, well, show me your shit. You what, know? about, like, that you suck or something? No, like, something about my picture, like, oh, this, this, or why It could be this, like or, this. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm like, you know, hey, first of all, you have 30 followers. Yeah. You know, second of all, your page is locked. Like, show me your shit. Yeah. Let's see what you got, yeah. what you're working with. Well, and you're also... Fucking an Instagram art critic. You you're, know? you're you're looking... At, like, I'm I'm the participant. Yeah. And you're viewing it. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like... what And, and that's the thing. I like, you know... I'm excited to talk to you. Like, my, my, one of my buddies, he, like... I, 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 a lot of my friends are comics, you know? And, and I fucking... Dude, I look at open micers 
And you watch an open micer like burn himself for 90 seconds. It's only 90 seconds. But it looks like the most horribly painful fucking longest 90 seconds like where a guy's getting tortured when he's got a mic and he's under the lights and there's nothing to say or he's tried a joke, he didn't do it right. Yeah. And you can, you can just see his heart breaking. And, and yeah. it's like, I'm like, that's a fuck, that's courage right there, you know? Yeah. And he put himself there. And it's like, and I look at that and I look at like, like fighting. It's like, yeah, you're, you're, you're thing, in your just, underwear, bro, yeah. in front of people <laughs> that fucking hate you that love you, that want to see you fail, your mom, yeah. like everybody. They think they could beat you up, but they don't fight. And it's going to go down in the most primal way that you might get dominated, knocked out, like anything could happen, or you're a hero. But, like, I'd see all that shit. Like, uh, uh, one of my friends, he was, like, the top-notch dude, like uh, Chuck Liddell, you know. He was a fucking a banger, and everybody's like, he's got torpedoes in his hands. He'll knock you out with any one of his limbs. Like, he's unbeatable, blah, 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 all this. And then fucking, you know, he gets clipped a couple times. Yeah, and dudes are like, no he, f- same guys, he sucks. Fuck that guy. He's washed. And it's like, how about just the greatness of the fight? You know, I remember looking at a fight once, and it was one of my buddies, Isaac uh, Valley Flag. And, and, and uh, he's an old friend from Michigan. And he just, he's another one of Jackson's MMA fighters. And he just got his, uh, he just beat Eves Edwards. And now he's going to go and, and uh, fight a dude, Sam Stout, another veteran, and, and for his second fight in the UFC now. And, um, dude, I was watching him take a beating. He got clipped hard and fucking, then he went down dudes on top of him. Then he fights to get it back up. And then he fucking gets, it was fucking painful for a couple rounds, you know? And, uh, it's just like, this is fucking shit. And you're at a cage, you know, and he's right to the, like, he's 10 feet from me, you know? And sorry, no help. Just like, fuck. And it's, it's shitty to watch that, you know? And then I started thinking about it later, the whole drive home, man. And, uh. I thought was that that was bad, you know. And I started thinking about what I thought about bad and thought thought about good. And I go, it's just an event that happened, because the guys on the other side of the fence, that was good. And so, there. And then I started thinking about opinions. And I go, why do you fight, Tate? And I and I go, I fight because of that thing that happens when two guys come together and they're bare like that, and they're gonna try something and not know where it goes and find out who they are a little more. And that's all that happens in there, man. And it's between those two dudes and whatever energy they create by coming together like that. Yeah. And uh, and I go, there ain't a good or bad. There's just like, did I gain something and learn something from this to go into a more beautiful tomorrow? Really is the essence of it for yeah. me. And uh, and it, and it taught me a lot that day, you know. And and I look at like whatever it is like that. It's like whether you're reading poetry or whether you're fucking taking pictures or whether you're telling jokes on stage. It's like. You're burying a part of yourself. You're making yourself vulnerable in a way to the universe yeah. that you've been taught to be scared to do for forever. And and for anybody that says boo to any of that, whatever your expression is, they just haven't thought it out or they're just a dickhead. You know what I mean? But really, I think when you look at it, you're like, I don't care if you're drawing daisies or if you're building a bridge or like whatever it is, man. It's like we're here to encourage each other, dude. That's yeah. that's where that growth happens, you know? Or, or they've never done it before. Right. Like, you know, like, I see those guys in the fight, you know, in the fight world, talk, they, all the, the fans and everything, they talk so much shit, but oh, they're like a fat bastard with, you know, man yep. tits sitting there eating fucking hostess Twinkies. Like, yep. get your fat ass off the fucking or, couch and go try a fight one day. E- either that go or... To the, go or to like the gym for a week. All Let's kinds of that. all kinds of hair gel and fucking, you know, they, these guys nearly got makeup yeah. on. They're so done up and they're like, oh, I could fucking... You know, all right, yeah, dude, yeah. just pump the brakes a little, partner. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, they've been in the tanning machine. <laughs> Come right? on. You got the nicest manicure I've ever seen, but just let's just pump the brakes, kid. <laughs> all right? Hell yeah, that shit when, you know, it's a different story when you get in a, a ring. Yeah. Or anything. I mean, just when you try, you know, to go, like, I look at all those parallels. My coach would talk a lot about that, too, and he'd be like, you know, he says, you ever, you know much about music, Tate? And I said, no, nah, man, not too much. <laughs> and and he goes, you know, there's ciphers and there's there's beats that are in between the sounds. And he's like, and that's, those are the rhythms you're looking for. You know what I mean? And he's got his own rhythm. And you want to upset his rhythm. You want to boom, 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 boom. Yeah. And, th- and that's where you're going to score. And and, you know, and just looking at all the parallels and all those things in life is super fucking interesting to me, man. Yeah. You know, and it comes up, I mean, whatever you're doing. I mean, I, I think about, like, s- some artists, you know, that draw and paint and shit. And then, like, what Cartoon does. Yeah. Like, when, 
You're, when, when you're going, when, like, first he draws something up, or maybe he just freestyles shit. I don't know how he works. I know yeah. guys do both, but, like, then you maybe you got whatever's in your mind or a drawing or a stencil, and then you're fucking going to put it on skin. It's real now. There's not an eraser. Yeah. There's, you know what I mean? And it's like, that's a whole nother sense of, like, being present, and I think that's what I liked about the fighting, too, is that you got to be present in a way, or when you're taking a still frame of something, it's like you got to be present in that way where you're all in right here. You can't be thinking about the bills you got to pay or what, you, you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. I, I like that about folks. And I, I think going back to the mask, it's like, that's what he had. He's like present in a way that he's right there with you, you know? And, and that's what I fight to get to. Like for myself is like, cause it fuck, there's distractions everywhere, you know? Oh, yeah. Every five minutes. Yeah. For me really. Cause like my wife don't understand. I come to work. And she's like, oh, you just fucking hang out there. And your work your looks like fucking around. It looks like nothing to yeah, anybody on the like, outside. When she comes here, I really have to stop working because I can't work when she's going, you know, sitting here. And so uh, to her, it's just like, I'm just fucking around. Like, right. well, how, how is it that all the bills get paid then? <laughs> like, if it's just me, you think, who, where does it come? Where does yeah. the money come? Who's my benefactor? Like, somehow, where does the money come? Yeah. Just, if I'm just there fucking around all day and yeah. kicking with my homies and, you know, we're just hanging out with bitches or whatever, where's the money coming from? Yeah. Where does the, how am I getting paid? And then it's just like, you know, and she's right next to me every day. How long you been together? 17 years. Ho! <laughs> so... If people like are right next to me and they see that's how they see me, I wonder how the fucking rest of the world sees well, me. Well, it looks know? like, like a magic trick. You know what I mean? That's I mean that's yeah. truly what it looks like. People are like, How how the fuck do you do that? I'm like, Who do you know that's busier? It's like I, I'm like I got something going I, I, I'm not good at scheduling shit. Yeah. But it's like I got shit that I need to get done all the time and I kinda keep I wish I was more organized, bro, for real, but like But it's like it all cracks and I got it and it's just like Fucking thing yeah, after thing, after. It, it, it doesn't ever stop. It's not like my head is restful. Yeah, you know. Yeah, me neither. How did how did this come about? This hat, this sanctioned like that. Uh, Lux asked me to come down, and and uh, man, what a fucking gift, dude! I saw some of the baddest whips I ever saw in my fucking life, dude. Yeah. There, there's a flat back Cadillac over here. What color was it? It was all black. Yeah, dude. There's some sharp rides, man. Like yeah, brand, from good. brand new to classics. Yeah. And uh, and then and then and then the the bounce contest over in the warehouse yeah. across the way, like how did that event come about? And and where did where was Sanction born? And what what is what was all that? Is that a new brand that you're popped or? Yeah, basically, uh, Sanction is a car care product that talks to our people, you know, because there's other brands out there that just talks to the old men that you know are car enthusiasts and right. they love cars and they got like one car. Or a couple cars and they bring it out on Sunday and it works perfect and you know that's their time they just go out there and get away from the old lady and shine it up all day Saturday and Sunday's the day they bust it out and they just have to wipe it down on the Sunday so we're like fuck there's nothing for us you know one more time like when we started doing clothes there was nothing for us there was there was FUBU and right. cross colors and Tommy Hilfiger, you know, yeah, or fucking all this other shit that we didn't wear. Yep. We, we just wore Levi's, white shirts, black shirts, Dickies, and, you know, sh uh, Dickies. You know, we wore Cortezes, and we just kept it real simple. But there was never a, a brand right. that was talking to us. So that's what we made. So you know, we're back here again, and we, you know, we do cars. Yeah, you know, we've been doing cars. I bought my first lowrider in 1989. I didn't get it done till around 92, 93, and I got in a car club around 94. And since then, you know, I've got a couple more rides, you know, but our whole thing is uh, we do work for other companies, and we, our, our work has propelled a lot of companies and made them a lot of money. Yep. And it didn't really do that for us, you know? So we want to make a company that we could put that same energy into that'll make some money for us so we can, you know, we can live like them. So you guys got a product line and a, and yeah, all that? Uh, 14 different products, car care products. And what you came to was the launch of that. 
uh, okay. line. It's called Sanctioned Car Care Products. And basically, we just wanted to show uh, everybody that we invited, like our culture and, you know, what we what we had to say with the brand and who we were talking yep. to and who we were talking for. And that was our event. We had the, the press come through at first, and we did some interviews and, you know, questions, you know, open mic yep. questions. And then we had, uh, you know, Rockford Fosgate is a big sponsor of ours. They give us all of our stereo I sat in their van. Yeah, so they brought their van down. Um, we had the In-N-Out Burger truck come through. Everybody wants, you know, like yeah. a good little hamburger. And then we had a hopping contest, and we had our girl DJ Ma- Megan Daniels DJ, and we had some dancers. And It was sick, dude. Was, you know, the energy in there was so beautiful. Yeah, it was like, it was peaceful. Fuck yeah. We had people that never came to downtown that live in L.A. were scared to death to come yeah. downtown. They came through. Yeah, dude, I saw dudes that were like high-end fucking fashion moguls, like yeah. Jerome down here and shit. And, and like... Oh my god! Like it was sick. To like Las Vegas or something. I saw know? some jits dudes that I knew, some black belts. Not you know, like yeah. every everybody, just everybody. Yeah. I saw fucking a bunch of gangbanger heads. They're not like I was just like, yeah. this is the this is the fucking dopest and chillest event ever. You know. Yeah. And we we had done another event there in that same building. We did the Juxtapose 15 year anniversary. Really, of Juxtapose magazine. That's a wicked mag, dude. And we had the. You know, we were kind of bummed out because, like, that was a night of it was, uh, Pacquiao was fighting. Okay. And so we were like, fuck, you know, what are we going to do? Like, you know, it's hard to compete against that, you know? Yep. How are we going to get people down here? So we were like, fuck it, we're going to get the fight. So we projected the fight on the wall. We had the art show. We had the ice cream truck inside that same warehouse yep. where the hopping contest was. And we had the fight outside projected up on the wall. So, Sick. you know, everybody was just losing their mind that, they could come to a cool event of a you know an iconic yeah. thing like Juxtapose magazine, and they didn't have to miss the fight, you know, which was there. There was probably a bunch of people that contemplated on coming, but they didn't want to miss that. Kind of adds new they flavor. Didn't miss that, and we we're like, it's fuck cool, you, you don't gotta miss nothing. You can come to our event, you know. This. What's next? What do you got coming up? Uh, I'm doing. A couple books this year yeah you know I, I did one book in 2009 and i promoted that for a couple of years until that first run sa- sold out and so now this year i'm putting out a book called um the working title is portraiture of los angeles and it's basically portraits of all the different kinds of homies here in la yeah and uh la woman book you know part yeah. two and then uh probably gonna put out a low rider book also of all the you know shots i've done in the low riding community so, i just love your hashtag dude this is los angeles yeah like there's a, that's a title bro i mean it's it's a that's a big ass book but that's yeah you know what you capture is so distinct and so fucking like you've got views into everything too you know what i mean like your your, your eyeglass is looking into so many different facets and and yeah. and then you know and 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 whether it's a red carpet thing or whether it's like a real subversive revolutionary fucking photo, you know, yeah. or, or or just something simple like, you know, like the L.A. hands like that all blew up at like out, out of a picture. You know what yeah. I mean? And it's fucking everywhere, you know, yeah. uh, it's like as a, like you're a brand maker, you know, you you're yeah. you like and that's fucking wicked, dude. It's like without even trying, though, that's a crazy. How would you get involved with like uh like Brolin and, and all them guys on that last show on? Uh, oh, they were. uh I got hit up a couple times on. A, we have a film division of SA Studios. We have like a cultural division. We have a car division. We have a film division. We have a mobile division, and each division goes out and tries to you know hustle, hustle. work. So the mobile division is the ones that got cartoon. You know the the Mo- Metro PCS phone mm-hmm. thing going on. The film division is the one who you know does these mo- movie posters and different events for m- movies like Machete and Righteous Kill and Inglorious Bastards and Gangster Squad. And what had happened on that was a couple of people were hitting me up to do a interview for Gangster Squad. So I told our film division, I was like, hey, you heard of a movie called Gangster Squad coming out? And they're like, of course, sure. You know, we pitched it, you know, a few months back. And I go, well, they're hitting me up to do an interview. You know, have you heard anything? They said, no, nah, you know. And I go, well, 
you know, hit them up. Let's, right. Let's see what's going on because they're coming at us. Yep. Through other people. So we got the meeting, went in and did our pitch, and we ended up getting to do a alternative uh, billboard, which you know turned into you know an art campaign. They're fucking that beautiful. Cartoon did, and uh, part of the pitch was that I go down and do a shoot of uh, the the cast on yep. the set of a reshoot. So I only got. You know, like six guys. I didn't get Sean Penn or some of the girls in there because they weren't at the reshoots. Oh, what happened was uh, the the shootout at the school. There, there was a no at the movie theater. There was a shootout at yep. the movie theater, and a bunch of people got killed. Well, in Gangster Squad, there was a scene just like that where they came in through the back door and they just shot through the movie seat, right. movie screen, and killed a bunch of people. And they were the ones who put out Batman, so they're like, "Hey, we can't, yeah. you know, it's too too touchy." So they reshot that scene, which was the scene in Chinatown, and that was where I got to go down and shoot Josh Brolin, uh, Ryan Gosling, Michael Pena, Anthony Mackie, Troy, and uh, I think that was about it. That Michael oh, Pena, no, Robert cool. Patrick. And so I shot all them on the set, and uh, that ended up, you know, being like another section of that job. And we also, uh, Cartoon built a car for the movie that also went on tour to some Sick. of the openings throughout, uh, you know, the, the country. And, you know, that was pretty much that, what we did for that particular job. Yeah. And, uh. What about Inglorious, like, uh, Inglorious Bastards, we did, uh, it was another art project where we had, I think, 13 artists design their own poster that they thought of the movie. Right. And, um, Quentin Tarantino signed the posters, and the artist signed the poster, and there was three copies of each poster that went for sale at this art show, and... We uh, gave that money to the to Red Cross in Haiti huh. during that event, and we we raised eighteen thousand. These are night. they're incredible, man. Well, that's just three of them. So there's ten more that. No oh, shit. That we did, yeah. What do you think of? Uh, I mean, that's when you were talking earlier about about you know allowances that you got to make to keep working and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. What I thought about instantly is 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 Tarantino and and uh, him as an artist and and like when you talk about movies and like how does some of this shit get made you know like that's a question like I mean it's fucking it's got to be a question at forty percent of the movies that I go to you know what I mean it's like there's a lot of stuff that gets put out you're like really this was a good idea to how many people how many people had to agree this was a good idea before they fucking signed a check yeah. and uh, and then I look at like, dude I watched Django and. Uh, and the thing that struck me is like this motherfucker, he fucking thinks of an idea, yeah. and then he starts writing his story, yeah. and he's thinking of people he wants to be characters, and then a couple months later he's like, let's get a camera and go do this. I mean, there's fucking no, I, I don't know how many writer directors there are out there, but there ain't nobody like him. Yeah. Like that's an amazing individual, man. Yeah. And uh, and and the shit he puts out, dude, like to me is like so. It makes you think. It's like you know, I look at Django and I and and sitting there and I'm like, this is phenomenal. And I heard like uh, Spike Lee, he talked a whole bunch of shit after it got never released, saw it. and he never went. And I'm like, how can you say anything about what you never? You don't even. You're just hearing about what other people's ideas are about what it might have been, but it's an it's a piece of art. I mean, it's like you never need to see a piece of art because I because well, Esteban saw it and he told me it was this, and so I'm good. It's like, yeah. how about you go have your own experience with life, motherfucker? Like, that's yeah. crazy. And especially for what it was, like, everybody's like, well, it's a, you know, it's a fucking black revenge film or whatever. And it's like, it, it, it's a lot of things, man. And, yeah. and that thing couldn't have gotten made maybe by a black director. Like, you know what I mean? It kind of took a dude, like a geeky Tarantino type of dude to make it palatable probably for any producer or anybody to go, okay, we'll do this. Yeah. Because it's fucking heavy, man. You know, and when you think about how people were treated, like the whole thing, it's just like, holy fuck, man, that was a heavy show for me to watch.
Yeah, not a lot of people could have got that type of green lit. Uh-uh. For sure, you know? Uh-uh. But he has that power, and he's got, you know, some of his money to, to put down to, you know? Yep. What did you think when you saw it? The parts I saw were good, you know? Yeah. It was a three-hour-something movie. As long as hell. And I, I, I'm not too good past it's two hours, about the most I can go. Right. So. I remember a friend took me to fucking... Uh, Transformers or something. I thought, motherfucker, it's a robot movie. It lasted three hours. You fucking tricked me, you son of a bitch. I couldn't yeah. believe I sat there for all that shit. Yeah, then I have a bad back, so I'm jerking around all over in the seat and right. running around, and my feet start hurting. I'm like, fuck, man, this is taking <laughs> too long. And I, I feel like shit because I eat the biggest popcorn you can buy and drink a Coke, so I'm like feeling like shit, all uncomfortable and this uncomfortable. We got to get you healthy, man. Yeah, no we got to we got to get you eating better. No movies, theater seats are comfortable. It's like being on a plane. Yeah, so you're like three hours. It felt like I was on a plane. Yeah, actually, you know. So, yeah. But the parts that I saw were I liked them. You know. It was yeah. Good. I like more documentaries because it's kind of real and it's only an hour. And what do you like watching? Every it, pretty much anything that's a documentary. Yeah. If it has like that edge to it. You watch like the uh, like moon landing stuff, like conspiracy stuff or no, what? Never. Just real stuff that's yeah. you know, conspiracy stuff is is kinda like what people think, you know, and they're just right. going off of an opinion. Yeah, something they think that something <coughs> might be, you know. Right. And and I get uh sucked into these conspiracy theories all the time, you know, people are like Hey, what about this guy? And this guy, I go, I man, I don't care about all that shit, you know? Right. That shit has nothing to do with, with what I'm trying to do. You're more about like, paying. I need to make a dollar yeah. today. Yeah. I got people's families counting on me working so that they can get paid. Right. So the, le the last thing I want to do is think about, well, maybe this thing. Maybe like somebody, maybe the CIA that. got JFK. Yeah, like, you know, who gives, like, you know, not who gives a fuck, but. You know, well, what I come to is with that shit is I go, family. what can I do? Yeah. You know, a lot of it's so big. I'm like, all I can do is impose uh, a smile on today and the people around me and try to do enrich that. But like a lot of that shit, like, what are you going to do either? Uh, cause, so yeah. the government's got a steamroller coming and it's got uh, Pfizer across the top of it. Well, I, I can't stop that. Yeah. You know what I mean? All I can do is make people fucking better around me right now. Yeah. That's what, you know, that's what it's about. You know, making a. Um, you know, living your life, making, you know, trying to live your life peaceful and, and do some, do stuff that makes you happy, you know, all that other drama is like, for what, you know, my, my mom, she's older and, and, um, her, her, her high is like fighting with the system, you know, like, right. Yeah. This, these people and that, I go, what are you getting out of all this? Like, you know, she's like, I just don't. I, I just don't like the way they try to bully people and they try to, you know, get over all the time. Like this fucking gets me pissed. And I go, but what are you gonna do? What are you gonna fight right. everybody? Like, when are you gonna like relax and smell the roses? You know. A dude like told me one time. I go. I, I'm like, it's one of these older dudes, and I like, kind of I look to all the time, and I talk about shit, ask him questions, and, and I go, Michael, you know, you gotta have an answer for this. You know, like, you you've been around you and. And he goes, you know, kid, he says, he says, I tried to, he says, I stopped having answers a long time ago. He says, whenever I had answers, I got ground I got to defend. And he says, I'd rather just have questions, and then the whole world opens up to me. And I go, holy fuck. I think of that every yeah. day, man. You know, just ask some questions, man, you know. Like, yeah. Just get get out there and just have your, you know, and, and not just of yourself even, and just open your mind up to, like, yeah. you know, what else could be and where, where could we go with it. Yeah. You know, that's what, you know. You have to have an open mind or you're not going to get nowhere. You're just going to keep bumping your head in the wall. So you, you always been partnered up with Cartoon? Since about 1992, yeah. Do you guys realize how, how fucking crazy it is that, like, like a tattoo artist and a photographer come together and make, like, this is fucking, this, you're the only ones. There's, yeah. no, there's nobody else that's doing this. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, we started a bunch of shit. It's it, fucking wild, it's man. It's like. You know, we don't notice it until we see other people come out with things like, you know, our pictures or our logos or shit like that. We're like, fuck, man, they don't have no fucking, like, 
pride or they don't have no originality or whatever. We, you know, you get kind of mad, but then you're like, it's our fault. We started this shit. You know? <laughs> like, how am I going to get mad at everybody that puts out a t-shirt in L.A.? Yeah. I made that shit look so fucking cool that everybody wants to do it. Yep. So I got to be mad at myself. Dude, you that's know? so dope, though. And it's like, I do. I get mad at myself. I'm like, fucking idiot, you know? You got everybody out here. Like, I got Gavinci or Givenchy has the LA fingers on their shirt. No way. Yeah. And it looks so whack. It's horrible. See, what, like, if you got paper like that, too, I can't believe that a company like that doesn't come, like, dude, I want to see the guy. Yeah. You know what I mean? At least have me shoot the campaign of the fake LA fingers, yeah. you know, uh, you know, campaign or something. Or know? give some, you know, I know you got your art director or whatever over there, but why don't you just go, let's, let's ask these dudes about it. Like, show us what you could do. Yeah. You know, just pitch us. Yeah, you know what I mean? A, do a collab with it's them. Not, it's not a trademark, but go ahead and pitch us, you know? They just pulled my pants down and just went <laughs> so crazy, right dude. up in me. And I just, you know, held, grabbed the sheets and, you know, took it like a man. I look at all that stuff, like the Mickey fingers, the like all, like, yeah. fuck, man. Yeah, there's nothing, you know, all you have to do in, in the legal world is tra- change something 30%. And you can do whatever and you want. And it's not with. art anymore. Yeah. Now it's somebody else's art. And they, and they changed it, so, you know. Fuck Fucking it. Fucking wild, dude. Do you guys have a big law firm that, that works for that looks at that shit, or is it just not worth it? Yeah, you know, yeah it's not worth it, and we have one. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, not worth it, and we do it anyway. Yeah, because uh, that shit is just, like, so much fucking money, man. Like, you could have bought, we could have bought a building already. Yeah, that's what uh, Scrape and uh, and them guys at Tapo would say. I'd, I'd send them a picture. I'd see something, and they'd be like, "It'd be tip out or fucking rap out or what, like." Yeah. And it's the same shit. It's their their the style of how it's big and little and then big again and all. Yeah. And they're like, dude, there's so much like there's companies in fucking Honduras and China and wherever yeah. that are spitting out our shit all over. And we got to move forward. What can we do? You know, that's yeah, our right. wake. That's yeah. behind us. Yeah, and at a certain so, point, I think you just—I mean, I guess you just got to look at it like that. Yeah, they could—they you could put a lot of energy into that shit, you yep. know, because it's out there. There's so much shit out there. Yep. And it just fucks with you, but you know, you got to think either I can go back and you know fight these guys. Yeah. Or I can keep going forward and keep moving and keep making more. And shit you'll make that, your next shit. Yeah, keep making more shit that people are gonna copy and you know. One of these days, one of these things is going to crack, so we don't yeah. have to worry about that little punk-ass, you know, shit that they're making and their little money they're taking, you know. You got to look at it, too. I think whatever you stare at gets bigger, you know what I mean? And it goes back, you know, there's there's an old fucking quote where it's like, if you know, be careful when you look into the abyss because the abyss is looking back into you. Yeah. And it can overwhelm you, you know, like, and whatever, like, I can look at that or look at somebody hating on you know whatever it is or any of that stuff but then then i let that shit consume me and i, I go or i just ignore it and i look to the good and then the good gets real big you know and i just gotta i gotta be careful my focus with that you know i like rogan said one time he goes you know the thing all haters got in common is that they don't make nothing they're never going forward they're never doing anything you know what i mean and and, and uh it's important to look at because like i could hate on the hater and just stay right with them yeah you know but it's got to be hard because you're such like a, like a leading, like a cutting edge kind of artist in that way. That, that and there has been everything followed you. I mean, like whether it's Barker's line or fucking whatever it is that's gone on. It's like all that shit has been like, going. Oh, look at those. Guys. Yeah, that's an idea. I want to run that idea too. Yeah, you can just throw this on there and make it like that, and so it's like you know it doesn't look exactly like that, and you know there's nothing you could do about it. You said something that was pretty funny that I forgot what it was. But, <laughs> um, yeah, it's a it's a constant challenge, you know, and um, that's a that's a difference, you know. If you, if you got that hustle in you, you got that fight in you. Yep. And that's where you you uh, you like that challenge. It's you true, know? man. It's, it's like other, like they, like this kid the other day. He wrote, "If you're a leader." You know, you build leaders, you don't build followers. And I'm like, yeah, you know, he's my friend and everything. Yeah. So I just wrote back to him, like, well, hey, you can't make a leader. <laughs> you, but, you know, 
you can make followers you yeah. know a lot easier than you can make leaders yeah like, you true. can't make somebody have hustle in them nope if it was like that everybody i know would be fucking millionaires right yep. now because i would be like hey home you need to do this this and that when and you see go, friends of yours okay great I'll go do that right now, and they'd fucking do it, and they'd be, you know, right where we are, and you go, hey, Holmes, you should do this, that, and the other, and they'd be fucking a leader, too, but if you don't have it in you, you don't have it in you. You either are or you aren't. Yep. You're either a leader or a follower. I see it all day long. I see so many people, and I just go, like, this motherfucker ain't never going to have it. You and know? friends that you love, yeah. that you want to instill that in, and no matter what you do, yeah, you know? You, you, you listen to that Watch the Throne album, that Jay-Z and Kanye deal? No, man, he's, he's got a great thing in there, and 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 it and it's just it's just speaks to that. He's like, you know, I, I wanted to make you guys all kings in this, and fucking you guys just then just bit or took or what you know, and that yeah. whole uh, that whole idea, and like, you just you can't fucking do it, man. You yeah. know, and not everybody not, like, and not everybody should yeah. is the other thing, you know. And, they don't, and, they, and not everybody sees eye to eye, and and there is no common sense because not everybody's common. Mm -hmm. you know? It's like. You know, we we've, we've tried a bunch of different things, and and uh, you know, there's been times where we've tried to do something, and we had sixty guys. God damn. And, uh, you know, we were trying to do something for all of them. That's what that was the whole idea. Yeah. And they would get so burned out and get their panties twisted up, feelings hurt. And we're like, okay, fuck it, we won't do it then. Yeah. You sixty guys, we were thinking of this for you, for all of you, and they're like. Well, how come I'm not doing this? How come he's doing it first? How come he gets Bo. that much money? How come I get this? And how come he's not doing it? It's like, how come you don't shut the fuck up and just yeah. go with the flow? Because we're trying to do something for everybody. Yep. Not like you, where you're just thinking about, how come me? Well, that's how the come uncommon I, thing. I don't get this? How come I don't get that? And that? instead of all that, crying and bitching and moaning, just shut the fuck up and go with the flow. Cause yeah. You ain't doing shit. Yeah. You're not leading nothing. And that's the so uncommon thing about you, it, you, you know? and Cartoon. I think is that like to have two heads like that, that collaborate and can build together in that way. Instead of like, it's hard to have positive people, man. And yeah. a lot of people aren't just, you know, they are like that. They're like, well, what about we should be doing this? Well, go ahead and do that, dude. Yeah. I, I ain't putting a wall on you. Yeah, the, you know, my buddy uh, Rico, uh, a dude I, I uh, like, I, I own a little part of a club where. That, that he runs and he owns in fucking Dallas and he uh and and we I sent this picture of this thing to him and he fucking loves that he goes uh you hate on me like we ain't got the same amount of hours in the day yeah. and it's like it's like that man it's like everybody you got the same shine I just want to show you brother please you could do all that too you know but yeah. like you know what it is it's like the same thing about like like whether it's thinking like I'm gonna just live for heaven like in one day I'll, I'll get to heaven and then it's like I don't know if there's, ha I don't know any of that yeah. shit. I know we got here right now yeah. and I better make it crack because that shit is a, like, that's mythology. Yeah, I, I read, fantasy. I read mythology when I was a kid. I know about yeah. what, I know about what being Catholic or fucking Episcopalian or I know what all that shit's like, like it's a promise of like, we don't know. Yeah. And, and so if, if that's the case, like I got to shine today Yeah. and, 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 but, but whether it's like running to, you know, a merit we get told when we're kids oh you get married you fucking uh get in the church take communion get your do all that shit yeah. and 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 you're gonna and it's gonna be fine it'll be smooth sailing yeah. well how come everybody divorced how come people are fucking eating their pistols yeah. how come you know what i mean how come people drinking themselves into fucking misery yeah like how come all that then if that's the truth yeah. like all those people that followed that prescription like they're a lot unhappy like that don't work yeah. and, and so then and it's the same thing about accepting a job. And it's like you going, you had a choice to make, bro. Yeah. And and when you were working a club, that's a steady paycheck. Or I go do this crazy thing where I go see some different places and I tour with these bands that kind of yeah, some people free. know about and I'm not going to make any money yeah. to say yes to that, dude. Yeah, take that's a risk. different kind of dude. Yeah. And and that's the thing. Like when you're talking about I'm just always looking for my next paycheck, bro. I'm unemployed all the time. Yeah. And it's like that's how I live. And people are like, dude, I'd love to do what you do. I'm like. You better build some shoulders to carry that shit on because yeah. what I do is what it looks like. What I tell people, I go, you know when you're a kid and you get fired or you quit a job and you're making a couple hundred bucks a week or whatever that job fucking pays you and you got rent and it's due at the end of the month. But you know that even if you got a job today, if they're going to hold a check for one week or two weeks before you get yeah. that check, 
and you're gonna be fucked at the end of the month when the rent comes. Like yeah. that dead spot in there, yeah. that's where I live. Yeah. And <laughs> and if you don't have the consciousness yeah. to go, I'm okay in this spot where it's like wicked yeah. uncomfortable for yeah. everybody on the planet, then you don't want my job. Yeah. Because that's I gotta live in that consciousness and going. I got to meet the guy that I don't know yet to get my next job from. I don't even know he exists. I don't know what his number is. I don't know where he lives. Yeah. You know, that's that's a different kind of life, man. Yeah, you're just thinking like, okay, today the day where I get this phone call. Yeah. Where I'm going to get these 10 Gs to, to pick, cover my uh, bills this month. Yeah. Where the phone call where you can make a situation out of that phone call so right where you could get to that it's not it's never going to be because there ain't a check at the end like, of the phone hey, call man, yeah i got 10 g's for you to do this thing for yeah. me come on through baby come yeah. get that check and let's make it happen like everybody that works for me yeah i always tell them hey man um you know because they all think that this shit is so easy and everything right and i'll be like hey uh do you know anybody that that uh you know needs any photo shit going on or any kind of work and they're like I know somebody that does I go, hey, can you call them? And they're like, yeah, sure. What do you want me to tell them? I go, well, just tell them that, you know, we need some work. Because if I don't get any work coming in, I ain't going to have money to pay you. <laughs> and they're like, like wow, well, don't, oh, come on, man. Don't tell me that, you know. Don't don't tell me that, you know. Like, you know, I'm counting on this job and shit like that. And I got my family, this and that. And I go, I go well, that's how I feel every day. Yeah. That feeling that you got right there, I feel that all day long, every day. Yeah. Just to keep all you people, to you know, moving every yeah. day. I gotta create all the fucking work for everybody to come. And that's the thing. Have a job. You know what I like when I talk to a guy like that? I like a guy that goes, "Oh, I got a responsibility in this, and this is a family, and I gotta make this work too. Let me get some wood for the fire. Yeah. Let me. You know what I mean? Yeah." That's and that's an uncommon dude. Yeah, you don't find that. It's an uncommon dude, you know. Yeah. You, know you gotta, right. you gotta be up in here. Oh, sorry. That's all right. That's why there's, you know, like that, like I, when I saw that thing, like a leader makes a leader. You don't fucking make a leader. Yeah. There's no way you can make somebody hustle. You can make somebody have drive. Right. Or make somebody. You can help somebody, like coach them, you know, like a like a coach. Yep. There's like a. Uh, like a trainer in the fighting world. Right. But the fighter wants to fight. Right. And the trainer's just helping him get And he got to drive to the gym every day. Right. He got to do the work. Yeah. These motherfuckers don't want to do the work. So yeah. I can't make them yeah. a fucking leader, you know? I yeah. can't make them, uh, you know, work while they're at work. You know, like if you show up to work, then, right. yeah, we could do this, this, and that. But like you said, you know, if they ain't bringing fire they're to not, wood, they're, they're not, not They're not guy. brainstorming when they're at yeah. home having a beer. Yeah, they're just like, okay, that yeah. the do, the job is done today. Like, I have an uh, ongoing joke here, you know, with all the employees. They're like, hey, where's so-and-so? And I'll go, is it 501? Oh, they're gone. <laughs> is it 459? They're gone. Yeah. You know, if it's close to that fucking cutoff time, they're phew, yeah. gone. Yeah. And they, their phone is off. So crazy, dude. Know. A job like this in an environment like this. Yeah. What? The, are you kidding me? They like, turn their phone off, but you'll see them on Facebook, Instagram, right, everything right. else. But you know they ain't answering. But you phone. can't reach them. Yeah. So it's like, you know the the, you know there's the workers and then there's the bosses, you know. Yep. And and there's a big, 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 big line there's, between yeah. those two. Yeah. It's not a thin line, that's for yeah. sure. You know, because this shit is no, uh, it's not for everybody. You know. Well, especially with all the choices, like when. Like, where you come from and the people that you're helping and bringing up and all that. And it's yeah. like what they're doing, you know, it's like you, you're you encouraging fucking folks that are like easy to go, you know, the world against me anyway. Fuck it. You know what I mean? And yeah. it's like it's hard to help them dudes. You know what I mean? And yeah. and, uh, and, that, and and at the same time, you're like, I've been that dude and I've been blessed with the fucking people I've been around. They gave me a shot when I like when I had a consciousness shift, you know, yeah. and when something shifted in me and I go. Because they go, dude, you're always throwing rocks into the pool, and it's always creating waves. And your waves are shit. They're fucking robbing somebody's house. They're fucking hurting somebody, putting yeah. tears in eyes, whatever it is. you know. But the fucking thing about humans is we're always throwing pebbles in that pond. Yeah. And so now your job is just to create positive fucking waves that are hitting people. Like, yeah. make sure that you're impacting people in a good way, you know. And and I, and But not until that shift happens when you go, I'm a part of a bigger thing. 
Yeah. Like we're all part, we're all in this together. And when you get that in your head, you're like, okay, what can I do to help out? You know, like when I started looking at my boss and I go, instead of, I want to make more money, I want this, like, and it was at a nightclub. And I go, dude, she's struggling to pay us all the time. I'm like, how can I make her more money? And when I started thinking about how can I make the club, everything more money, yeah, everybody got more money. Yeah, You know what I mean? It was like, hello, dummy. Yeah. It, it ain't about you. And every time it's been about me, I fucking fuck myself. I think it's about me like I'm going to do me good. I lose every time because I'm thinking about me. But when yeah. I'm thinking about you or how to make this whole thing better, dude, my life fucking shines, you know? Yeah, that's what you. All, I always think. I always think even if I'm thinking about me, yeah. I have to think, okay, I'm doing this for me. I got to do this for them. Right. You know, well, I and always, also like what you're saying. have that balance of. What you're saying, like, if I don't do this, then all these guys maybe go hungry this month or fucking, yeah. you know what I mean? And Like, you're always, a, like, the position of a boss you are. You're always thinking it, you know, regardless. Yeah, yeah of everybody. But yeah. there's even outside of this, I always think of other people, you know. Like, I, I just did this thing for UNICEF, and it was go down to Nicaragua for a week, and you go and take pictures of and film right. everything that's going to go on, and you take photos of everything that's going to go on, and then you give it all to us, and you do it for free. And I was like, okay, where do I sign up? Sick. You know, because that's the kind of things that you have to do yep. when you do things for you. Yeah. You know, there's things you do for you. And then at that same time, you got to do, you know, for for you got to do for other people, for your other brothers that are out in the world. So that thing was, you know, to expose uh, sex tra trafficking with children in Nicaragua. Wow. And so by me going down there with this guy, Yerky, from a band called 69 Eyes in Finland. He went down there on behalf of UNICEF Finland, got invited by UNICEF Nicaragua to come. They invited him, and he told me, hey, you want to come and do this? I was like, yeah, to sign me up. Solid. One, I got to do something, you know, for to help kids, you know, because yep. I think, you know, that's, that's like the worst thing you could do yep. is do shit to kids. Yep. Like you just have to be the biggest piece of shit in the world to do some shit to a kid, you know? And then I got to, uh, you know, that was number one. Number two was I got to travel and I got to see a different, you know, lifestyle, different culture. But at the end of that, it was like, okay, one, I'm giving you all this. Two, I got to see and do this. Yeah. Three, nothing was coming in for me and my family that week. Right. I, was n I wasn't out there, you know, trying to bring in work for me and my employees or me and my family. I wasn't getting nothing, but I, I was just giving. So that felt good because I thought, okay, you know, I'm doing this. You know, something's going to come back yep. good. And that's just how I always think all the time, you know, yep. just – I do something for me, like one for me, one for you. Yeah. And that's <coughs> the way I, I live my life. And it's cool because after a while, the one for me, one for you, the one for you, I get, oh, that's for me too. Like as long as I'm helping, it's for every, you know yeah. what I mean? It's like, and I go, there ain't a separation, man. There's just air in between us and fucking that, and that's a binding thing. It ain't separating us, you know what I yeah. mean? It's a fucking, it's dope, man. And that's an easy way to live, bro. Yeah. You know, and that other stuff is fear. Like, I'm scared I ain't going to get mine, or I'm scared there's not enough, and, like, fuck, if you're the only one that's fucking making T-shirts, then I fucking, dude, I, I don't know, I got to take your business. It's like, there's plenty of business. There's, yeah. you know what I mean? And yeah. and when I come into that place, fuck, there's easy, creative process. When I don't, I'm giving myself cancer. Yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> it's, I think yeah, it's exactly. that simple, man. Fucking right on. Well, I, I really appreciate you sitting with me all this time, dude. And, yeah, no uh, problem. I'd love to chat more, dude. Uh, uh. What what uh you got other shows coming up and stuff? No, right now I'm just working on uh those those you know, books those books and uh trying to get a documentary off the ground. I got three documentaries that I'm working with, and then the rest of my time goes to sanction. You know, right filming on. uh viral videos or doing the advertising campaign or you know doing the the promotional stuff for that. You know, where getting, where can folks pick up your books? Uh, on my site, you know, com. Okay. I have, uh, you know, the T-shirts on there, other little things I make, you know, playing cards or slip mats or books or 
phone cases or awesome you know whatever i can uh make uh you know bring in money for you know to to keep it going you know yep and uh people find you on twitter at esteban oreo uh no at jokerbrand.com at jokerbrand yeah i pretty much promote esteban oreo jokerbrand and sanction okay but on Instagram, you're at Esteban Oreo. Yeah, Esteban underscore Oreo. Somebody else had my name at the beginning. It's so crazy. Was, you know, fucked on that. So I just. Do you have the Joker up. brand also on Instagram or no? No, that's our that's our company in Europe. Okay. We have a distribution out there, and those guys do shit, you know, perfectly. I wish I could have them out here. Yeah. They they get the vision. You know, perfectly. They have it all in the right shops. They they do everything like exactly how I want to do it, which is you know, there's no stress. You know, yep. I already I already know. It. Like you can, I have a hundred percent trust in them. Cool. The, the way they do the money, the accounting, and I don't know. They're just good people out there. Nice. Those guys that you know work with us. It's cool the way the internet has brought all those people together. It's like it's a small world anymore, you oh, know yeah. what I mean? And you could get people start clicking that like minds are just starting to click together and come up, man. And, yeah. and like the collabos are big and powerful nowadays. Yeah. 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 It's, it's a, in one way, it's easier to, you know, get get out there. Right. And the other way, it's like oversaturated, you know? Yeah. So it's like. You got to filter through a lot of so bullshit. Shit for there, sure. You know? And for sure. Because there's, it's so easy. Yeah. People go, oh, hey, uh, you know, how do I do this? I go, oh, make a Facebook page, a Twitter account, or Instagram, and just take pictures. And they're like, why are we doing that? I go, keep doing it. Yeah. You know, That's the thing is like, there's so many, so many guys I know that have been fighting for so long, and it's like, like my friend Isaac I was talking about earlier, he had 17 fights or something before he got asked to go to the UFC. Yeah. It's like. That's tens of thousands of hours of gym time. Yeah. And it's like dudes come in for a couple minutes. They're like, I'm ready. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> even if you are, a lot of dudes are that never get out. You know, you got to love yeah. what you're doing. You know, that's, I mean, I don't know. Like whenever I, I say it, for, people are like, how do I do this? How do you got to love it? Yeah. You got to love it when it's hard. You got to love it when you got broken fingers. You got to love it no matter what's happening, you know? Yeah. Like, and like you would probably say, like, if you don't love taking pictures, yeah. Then you should do something, you know, if you're expecting a paycheck out of it, you're yeah. not going to have fun doing it to get to a paycheck. Yeah, I tell them, try it as a hobby first for a couple of years. Yeah. See if you love it. Yeah. And then if you if you love it that much, then get some thick skin and get ready because uh, there's a lot of competition. Right. You know, it's, gonna, it's, it's not going to be easy. The only other dude I know that really makes makes money uh, on pictures, he, he, uh, he does them for um, – his name Willie Wisman. He does them for like Powder Magazine and Ski Magazine and shit. And he was just a dude that he lived in the mountains in New Mexico, and he moved up to to Utah and he travels to Colorado. And he'd go and camp out in the middle of the night. He'd hike up and he'd throw up a tent and he'd watch the sun come up and shit in the mountain, you know, and and take pictures. He just loved taking pictures of it. And then somebody got turned on to it, and then he became like a ski photographer. It's like, but it, it's like it's out of the love. It's always like no matter who I see that's in one of these jobs that's kind of outside the norm. It's yeah. they, they got a deep appreciation and a deep love for what they're doing, you know. Yeah, I love every every time, every day that I get to take pictures is great. You yeah. know, the hardest part about it is getting make getting work out of it. Yeah, you know, like you still have to pitch yourself just as hard as you did the first day. Yep, you know, even after you've shot everybody and their mom, you've done. Well, I hope these books really get, yeah. like, get you some traction and momentum like that, you know? I mean, yeah. you look at some cr crazy shit that hits, you know, and I think that you're that niche, dude. Like, you're, fuck. What you have is so compelling and draws you right in. And every image, regardless if it's a portrait or if it's a street scene or if it's yeah. a fucking uh, athletic event, it's like, they just fucking draw you in, man. They're, they're, they're rad, you know? And the yeah. sky's the limit. It's like, there's no boundaries on your art. You can do whatever the yeah. fuck you want, you know? Yeah, that's what I, that's what I try to do, you know? I, yeah. And I try to show everything. So people are, you know, at first everybody's just like, oh, I thought you just take pictures of low riders. Like, oh, I thought you just take pictures of gangsters. You know, right. Was born. Oh, you want to shoot rappers? Yeah. Oh, okay. I thought you just shot like, you know, gangsters and low riders. And then I started shooting rappers. They're like, 
Oh, yeah, I want to shoot, like, celebrities. You want to shoot celebrities? No, I can hook that <laughs> up. I thought you just want to do, like, it's rappers. crazy. When you put it out in the fucking universe, dude, you just utter the sounds, shit starts coming. Yeah. You know, it's fucking wild, dude. Yeah. I don't know how it all works, but there's some matrix that goes on that's fucking shit's dialed in, and you do positive shit, and you appreciate what you're doing. That shit builds on itself, and then all of a sudden the, the universe is, like, listening to you, yeah. and it, and shit starts coming in then, man. Yeah, it, wor- it works pretty good. Yeah. Like, you know, like like our boy Max said, or uh, Mask. Yeah. You know, believe. If yeah. You believe in something, you know, you can make it happen. Yeah. You know, if those people that, you know, sit there and complain and moan and they don't believe in, it and shit. Yeah. It just don't happen. I love what Lucky said. I was talking to him. He goes, you know, there's just all them dudes, dude. You got to cut them out, Tate. They're, they're, uh, they're profession- professional lemon chewers. They're just over there sucking lemons all the time. They got that sour fucking face. Just stay away from them people. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah there's yeah. the truth. But, you know, they, they, they keep me going, you know. Like I say, like, uh, you know, people would make comments and shit on that. And at, at first I'd get a little mad, but I wouldn't even get mad enough to reply to them. Right. But to me, I just let it, you know. Well, so many lone people. It gives me more fire. So many of them people, too, that's all they're looking for is just like, oh, cool, that guy, he responded to me. It's like, I have a hard time not going, listen, you fucking dolt. You don't, you know, but it's like, of course, they're, they, they know they're idiots. You know, I, I, yeah, I just try to, uh, I just take that and use it as fire. Yeah. To just shit on them the next day. Yeah. Like, yeah, this one's for that motherfucker. (laughs) Like, brrr. 3,000 likes, you know? And I'm yeah. Like, yeah. I love it, you man. Like me now. <laughs> I love what you're doing, dude. And uh, I, and and also, I appreciate it, you know? Yeah, I trip out on the things that people, they like, though. Oh, on the Instagram and shit? Yeah, like, I, like I'll put up something, and I'll be like, oh, this, this is it. This fucking yeah. picture is, like, badass. Like, yeah. They're going to fucking love it. And I'll get, like, a good uh, reaction, and then I'll put something, like, just, like, that I just did real quick. Didn't put too much thought in right. it, and they'll just blast out on that one. They'll yeah. like, everybody will just. You know what's a winner every time? West Coast over that fucking girl's ass cheeks. Yeah. Every time. Yeah. That's that. Like anything else, like that's the trump card. Sorry, that wins, hands down. Yeah. Some fucking dope shit, man. It's funny. It's dope. It's funny the stuff it catches, you know. Yeah, and you never know really what it is, like what's gonna, you know. What it, I mean, if you could, like, yeah, I was I was tripping out. I was watching this fucking video. Uh, Call me maybe. Yeah. You ever hear that song? Uh-uh. Uh, you gotta Google it, dude. You'd be on the fucking. I'm, and then the U.S. Army does a thing where they're like, and it's this little. It's like a girl, like Justin Bieber or something type pop singer type thing, yeah. and uh, it's fucking hilarious. They got like swim teams doing it, Olympic teams doing it. They got a fucking dude. L.A. Jail's got a fucking clip where they're yeah. doing like, and they're all. It's fucking gayer than gay yeah and so fucking hilarious man and i'm like that bitch is tripping right now because everybody's making a fucking their own version of this video yeah. and uh she had no idea it was gonna yeah. get this kind of you know and you don't like it's like what catches like what's a catchy hook you know like you, your friends would be real and shit like yeah how, he don't know what's yeah. gonna yeah or else he keep what's gonna crack i'm sure there's songs yeah. that he liked that were like he thought was gonna be the shit yeah that just crashed out and he's like i don't fucking know you know, and then something else hits like who knew jump around was going to be what it was. You know yeah. what I mean? It's like, yeah. Yeah. It's just... So keep trying out there, kids. That's all we're saying. Believe and keep trying. Yeah. Keep putting it out. Keep keep going. Go hard. Go hard. Right on, man. Well, thanks, man. And uh, and we'll talk again soon. I'd like to do this more. All right. Cool. Thanks. All right, man. Cheers.